You know how you can drag controls around in the Visual Studio Designer? Well, wouldn't it be great if you could do the same in your own programs? I'm Hugh, and in the next few minutes, I'll show you exactly how to add draggable controls to your own C-sharp programs. Like this. Now, over a series of short lessons, I've already shown you how to create a program and document launchpad that lets you drop applications, documents, and even entire directories into a window. Each item can then be launched by clicking a button. Then I decided I'd like to be able to reorder the buttons by dragging them around, but how do you do that? I'll explain the basics in the next few minutes, so if you want to follow along, load up Visual Studio and start a new Windows Forms project. Whenever I develop new code, new behavior, for example, here, dragging buttons around on a form, I try to do it in as simple a test application as possible. And that's what I've done here. I don't want to integrate it straight into my application launch pad because the code is already quite complicated. And I really, in the development state, want to keep it simple. So here I've got a clean Windows Forms application with just these two buttons on. These are the buttons that I'm going to be trying to drag around. And I've also got this multi-line text box, and that's simply because I might want to print information to help me understand, debugging information to help me understand exactly what's going on. Now, before I explain my code, there are a few things you need to be clear about. Each control has a coordinate system, with X defining the horizontal plane and Y defining the vertical. Any point on the control can be defined by its X and Y position. Here, the form's top left corner has the coordinates 0, 0. That is, x is 0, and so is y. The x values of the form go from 0 to the form width, and y increases from 0 to the form height. The location of controls, such as the buttons, on the form is given by each control's x and y position on the form. By that, I mean the top left corner of each control has a position that is given by the x and y position of the form's coordinates. But when a mouse event such as a mouse down occurs, that is when a mouse button is pressed, that event can be queried to get an x and a y coordinate. But bear in mind that these coordinates are relative to each control. So mouse down over a button will give me the x and y coordinates of the mouse pointer relative to the button, not to the form. That is, each button's corner now has an x and y of 0, and the mouse coordinates given by the mouse pointer's mouse down event are relative to those button coordinates. Now, converting between coordinate systems, the X's and Y's of mouse positions on buttons or on the form itself, for example, is one of the essential problems that we'll have to deal with when dragging controls around. Now, let me show you this. Let me run this. I've added some debugging output for mouse down over both button and over the form. So if I control click a button, you can see that it gives me x of 8 and y of 9. Well, clearly, that's not relative to the form. It's relative to the button. If I put my mouse pointer closer to the top left corner of the button and do it again, you can see that there's smaller and smaller values as I get closer and closer to the zero point of the button. But if I slide my mouse pointer just to the left of this button and click on the form, and you can see now I've got quite large x and y values because those coordinates are no longer relative to the button. They're now relative to the form, which has zero at its top left corner and then increases for x across the horizontal and y down the vertical. OK, without more ado, let's see how I designed and coded this. The first thing I did was to create empty event handlers by double clicking the mouse down mouse move and mouse up events for button one. I want those same event handlers to be used for button two, so I just selected button two, and then in the events panel down here, you, you can just click the event and then you can select one of the existing mouse event handlers. So that's how I associated the same event handlers. And let's see this working. 
So you can see that this time I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard and now I can drag one of these buttons around. If I don't do hold down the control key, then my attempts to drag it uh, don't work. And that's by design. And notice when I do drag it that the position of the mouse pointer inside the button stays the same. So if I put it up towards the left hand corner and drag again, when I finish dragging, it's still at the left hand corner. I've put it down at the right hand corner, drag again. And when I finish dragging, it's still down in that corner. Okay, so now let's close this down and look at the code itself. Uh, first of all, I have these three variables declared up here. Now, the Boolean dragging will only be used, will only be set to true when the drag operation is underway. X offset and Y offset will save the X and Y positions relative to the button that I clicked. And that will enable me to move the button as the mouse pointer moves. When the form is loaded here in the constructor, I set dragging to false so that the buttons don't start moving around right away. Now dragging all starts when the user presses the mouse button. So you can see that's on mouse down down here. Let me just move that up. Uh, so it all begins when this event handler executes when the mouse button goes down over a control. Here the sender parameter is the control over which the mouse was clicked. Now I'm only dealing with buttons, so I cast it to a button object. I only want this to work when the control key is held down, and this test here deals with that. If you're not familiar with control.modifier keys, remember you can press F1 in the editor to pop up some documentation. So you just put your cursor over here and press F1, and that would load it up into your web browser. Then I save the position of the mouse pointer relative to the button. So if it was 10 pixels on the X coordinates and 15 pixels down on the Y, then the X offset would be assigned 10 and the Y offset would be assigned 15. The mouse up event fires when the mouse button is released. And all that event handler does is set dragging to be false. Now the real work is done in this event handler here, button one underscore mouse move. And this is what happens when the mouse moves having started a dragging operation. So if dragging is true, which it will be after a control mouse click over a button has been registered because the mouse down event set dragging to true, then all this code is run. First, it gets the X and Y location of the mouse pointer. If the mouse pointer has moved one pixel in the X direction and two pixels in the Y direction, and X and Y were 10 and 15 before, well, X and Y will now be 11 and 17. It saves these new locations to these two variables, X moved and Y moved. Then uh, it calculates a new location for the button by adding the number of pixels that the mouse pointer moved, X moved and Y moved, to the current X and Y location of the button. The button's location is then updated. I do that by creating a new point with the new X and Y positions, the ones that I just calculated, and I assign that point to the button's location property, and that's all there is to it. Well, with one exception, there is one problem, and I'll show you what it is. When I start my drag operation, it all looks good, but if I drag beyond the left-hand corner, oh, of the form or the bottom or the top or the right, the button just goes out of view. It goes beyond the boundaries of the form. That's obviously not desirable behavior and it's something I need to fix. Okay, so here's my fixed version. Now I'll select button one to drag, try to drag it out beyond the left. I can't do it. So my cursor moves left, but the button stays right at the edge and the same in all directions. Okay, so what did I do to fix it? Well, it's this block of code here. So I have added this block of code into the mouse move event handler. So you can see this is all the same code as before, but before I move the button down here by changing its location, this code executes. Now, what does this do? Well, it tests that the X and Y locations of the dragged button don't go beyond the left and upper limits of the form. That is, they don't go into positions less than zero within the form. Remember that the top left corner of the form has X and Y values of zero, zero. So it 
ensures that they don't go in either of those directions, X towards the left or Y going up, they don't go less than that value of zero. And also that they're not dragged beyond the right and bottom edges of the form. Now that test is a bit more complicated to test that the button isn't dragged beyond the right edge of the form. I get the button's location on the form, its X value. Then I add on the button's width, which gives me the position of the right edge of the button. I test that this is not greater than or equal to the client size dot width of the form itself. If it is, then I don't change the button's position. Client size, by the way, is the size of the interior part of the form, not counting its borders and its title bar. And then I perform a similar test with the Y coordinates and the form's client size dot height. And there you are, that's it. So I think that's um, pretty satisfactory now. I've tested out my buttons, they don't move if I just click them. So they'll respond to normal mouse click events when I want to, in my final application, launch programs on a click. But when I press control click, they go into a different mode. They go into dragging mode and let me drag them around on the form without going beyond the borders. In the next lesson, I'll explain how I added drag and drop buttons to my application launchpad project. And I'll also show you a few extra tricks that I needed to do because in that program, the buttons are created at runtime. So I couldn't just click the events panel to add mouse events to them. And there were a few other little problems I also had to solve. I'll explain all that soon. In the meantime, be sure to bookmark this playlist, the link is down below, and subscribe to my channel and click that bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload new lessons.